recording. I'm writing an announce on the vegan matrix room. I'm just sending over a, a link to that and then I'll get started with the coding. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be kind of going over the roadmap and writing the roadmap for Vegan Buddies because this is the first stream. Uh, Vegan Buddies is a planned mobile app that'll match prospective vegans with experienced vegans and allow experienced vegans to help uh, the prospective vegans figure out what to eat and how to stay healthy. And somewhere up here, I have a roadmap in Czech, which I'm going to be tr translating uh, to, to English. And I'm also going to make some technical decisions like how to create the app because I haven't started actually writing the app. Uh, so far we have a Git repository. Vegan buddies. Mm. Moment, where is the Git repository? Uh, veganbuddies.org join us on github yeah that'll get you there it's with the minus sign and I'm gonna go ahead and clone this because I am working in a virtual machine and I haven't cloned it yet uh, copy control shift B uh, why don't it work? Copier robot. Aha, that's why it doesn't work. Uh, general, generic. I need to stay in the virtual machine when I'm switching windows. I'm not used to this yet. Uh, and how do I do that? It's not working right now. When I switch windows, it switches windows on my main computer and not in the virtual machine. Uh, I need to somehow make it grab the keyboard.
I'm confused. Why is it not working? Uh, I guess the easiest way to deal with this might be to kill X monad on my host. And now I can't switch over to this window. So that didn't work. Uh, what can I do? Generic. Okay, now it works. That's interesting. Anyways, where was I? I was cloning. No, that did not work again. Okay, so I need to figure out how to make this virtual machine work first. And then I can get back to actually doing what I'm doing. Of course, first stream, you know, always a problem. I wanted to do it in the virtual machine so that I wouldn't leak passwords onto the live stream. I had this problem. I, I was trying to do the recordings and I ended up leaking a bunch of passwords onto the screen because they were in my bash history because of course, or I just opened up my password manager and, or I opened up my email and there was some private information there. I don't want that. So I only have the virtual machine window selected and it shouldn't leak. But now I have the trouble that I can't get it to grab the keyboard. And now the keyboard's grabbed, and now the keyboard is ungrabbed. What? Now it works. OK, that's interesting. I guess I'll just hope that it stays working. And now I can clone. Git clone. There we go. And soon we will have the repo. And right now there's just a readme in the website. And I need to do git submodule blah, blah, blah to get the theme for the website. But I'm not actually going to be working on the website now. I'm going to be working on the roadmap. So what I'll do is I will open up Emacs, hopefully in the virtual machine. And once it loads, I will start working on the roadmap and I'll just put the roadmap right in the right in the readme. So I guess I'll start out the screencast actually by saying more about what Vegan Buddies is. So if we go back to the Vegan Buddies, veganbuddies.org website, I have this tiny little mm, wireframe animation that uh, Petter Benesch created. It's in Czech, but you can see that when you if we get to the end and then it restarts. So you start and what happens is that it finds your location and then it shows people that are near you who have become buddies and you can like read about them and then you can start chatting with them. And that's just about everything. Uh, then it's just a basic chat app. And it also has some articles on how to be a good vegan, I guess. 
and maybe in the future there will be like some kind of nutrition information stuff or some general information about being a vegan. But the main thing that we need is we need to be able to create a list of people who are near to us and who have signed up to be a vegan buddy and who have passed all the tests to show that they have some basic knowledge of being a vegan, like how much vitamin B12 you need and what other nutrients are important. And so we don't want it to be entirely open. We don't want it so that anyone can become a vegan buddy. We want only people who are going to give good information to prospective vegans uh, to be vegan buddies. And so what I've been thinking is that there's this website called Lobster, Lobsters, and it's a message board. And the fact that it's a message board is really like irrelevant to what I'm going to talk about. But this message board, there's no sign up link. Uh, there's uh, only login, and then there's messages. Uh, then there's like posts on it, and. How do you become a member of Lobsters? You have to find another person who has an account and you have to befriend them and uh, then they can give you an invitation and then there's this entire tree of invites that shows how each person became a lobster. And what we're thinking is that we will have like the the root, the our organization's account, and it will invite organizational accounts for various language regions like German and French and Spanish. And then below those language regions, those organizations that we select can invite people to become mentors or vegan buddies uh, by sending them invites. And so I think I'll actually literally use uh, this bit of code. I'll have a lobsters server. It's open source. And I will include uh, the information about uh, like whether a person, where a person lives and their description and stuff in their account. Because right here, a person can, has a status, they're an active user and uh, they have the joined information. And then there's this about section, which is just a, a string and you can put anything there. And I was gonna replace that with a JSON object. I, I wanna do as little programming as possible. So I was gonna replace this about section with a JSON object that includes latitude and longitude and some other information about the user, including like if they've passed the, the responsible vegan mentor test and such. Uh, so that would be the first bit of architecture that I would have is to show this buddies list. I would be looking them up in the Lobster's database of users. The problem is that uh, this database is just being given to us as a tree. But what we need to be able to do is query by uh, location. And so I think that there's going to be basically two bits of uh, two bits of oh wait I have the keyboard grabbing problem again uh, so there's gonna be two bits oh, I got distracted I need to be able to query by location. So there's going to be two bits of infrastructure. One is going to be the lobster server. And the other is going to be an index by, in by location that you're going to be able to search users by location. And then it's going to return a URL to uh, the lobster user so that you can display the other information about that person. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy from Gridesta the stuff for drawing diagrams because I like this aesthetic style. So
So you're going to have the lobster server. And then you're going to have two way exchange of information between the lobster server. And the user index. And here's going to be the user index. So we have the lobster server and the user index. And when you log into the app, you're going to make a, a request to the user index to get the list of users that are nearby. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, look up the lobster user and So we look up the users in the user in uh, the mentors in the mentor index, I guess we'll call that. So we, we look up the uh, nearby mentors, we display their information, but then we need to start chatting with them. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a chat handle uh, for them, and we're going to use one of the two networks that are really popular for chatting. One is called Matrix, and the other is called XMPP. And the question is which one you should use. Uh, Again, I can't move. I'm going to have to figure this out, like solve this problem with the. With the virtual machine not grabbing the mouse properly because I can't work like this. And it's strange because I was recently using it and it was working and it works for a little while. And then it stops working. It's very bizarre. But anyways, I'm to the browser window. And I, what I wanted to look up is I wanted to uh, say that we're going to use one of the two major chat protocols. One is XMPP. And the other one is Matrix. So the XMPP protocol is older than Matrix, but it's much more um, scalable. It can be used for many millions of users at a time, whereas Matrix is much less scalable. And the reason why XMPP is kind of getting replaced by Matrix now is that the XMPP protocol supports extensions. And these extensions weren't necessarily compatible with between clients, whereas Matrix is very much a unified protocol and all clients are compatible with each other. Um, but for us, we're going to create a web app, a mobile app, 
and that mobile app only needs to be compatible with itself. So the in the incompatible XMPP extensions problem does not matter to us. And the fact that XMPP is very, uh, very scalable is nice because we want to not spend a lot of money on servers. Um, oh, so I'm going to go and look at the clients list. It would be ideal for me if I were to be able to take an XMPP or matrix client that already works ideally on both the Android and iPhone systems and just fork that client and then create this app out of a forked XMPP or matrix client. And so we have a number of options. We have Astra Chat, which is Android and iOS uh, on XMPP and purchase. I don't see a GitHub link here. Uh, license. Eula. That does not sound promising at all. So after chat's probably out. And what other options do we have? We have one that's on iOS that doesn't look that likely to be cross-platform and we have one on Android that doesn't look very likely to be cross-platform. So, so unfortunately XMPP appears to be ruled out if we want to support uh, iPhone and Android on one code base without writing a new code base. And Matrix also has a list of clients somewhere. Uh, not sure where. Okay, so I don't know where this list is yet. Um, clients, discover at the very bottom. So for mobile, we have uh, this, Ditto Chat, which is a React Native client for iOS and Android. And I already looked at Ditto Chat. It was written by this relatively young woman who then got hired by a company, and I don't think she works on Ditto Chat anymore. And when I looked in the web stores, I don't think I found it. I'll just check again whether it's in um, Google Play. But I don't really want to invest in Ditto Chat. So it appears to, it says this app is in development, be one of the first to try it and provide feedback. User-friendly matrix client. Uh, so it is installable on the Android app store under the early access label. And it's GPL three or later, which is good because that's like cool with me. And it says get it on F Droid, but I didn't find it on F Droid, which is why I thought it was like not existing anymore. And they also have open the web app. Uh huh. This these aren't buttons. Is this a, that's not a button? This is a button. That's interesting. So it's been like it's just not filled in yet. Uh. But we can look at the flow.
and it doesn't look terrible. I'm not sure what exactly it supports, how much stuff it supports. So that's one option is ditto. And so we have element Android and element iOS, and I don't really have the capacity to work with two code bases. I know that everybody says it's better to work with two code bases than to work with one, but I've been asked to support iOS and there's just no, no realistic chance that I would support iOS if I had to support two code bases. So unless there's somebody here, nobody's even in the chat, but unless there's somebody just jumping out of their skin to help me with supporting iOS, then it's going to have to be that way. This is very, very broken, this system. I don't know now how to dock this because my key, my key combinations don't work in either the virtual machine or on the host system. Okay. I'm going to have to deal with that somehow. Um, so hydrogen web client, that's not web client focusing on personal messaging performance, offline usage and wide browser support, including mobile. Okay. So that's, in the browser basically, which, and it's Apache 2, which is fine. It's written in JavaScript and doesn't even have a website. It has a, UI components can be easily used in isolation. That's, that's very useful for us because if we don't want to actually uh, fork the code base, if we can use those UI components, that would be very nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do what I often do when I am trying to decide on something, which is I create a list of the possibilities. And Chat would chat widgets for Android and iOS.md. So this is going to be public tender one for the Vegan Buddies project. And what we're looking for are the ability to integrate chat into a mobile app for both iOS and Android. And what, and so like, I need a set of widgets that allow me to integrate a chat interface to matrix.org or XMPP protocol. It seems that nothing 
that works. Set of free open source widgets. So the first possibility we said was um, ditto chat. So the next, I guess, fluffy chat is also across all platforms. AGPL, that's fine with me. I don't care. Fluffychat.im. I guess it's going to come down to a couple things. One is what kinds of, so it's on the App Store and on F. Droid and on Google Play, that's great. Um, it's kind of important to me if it supports like adding images are very, very important. Audio messages are also very important. And end-to-end -end encryption is also important. And I don't understand this German, but this lock seems to suggest that it supports end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, so we could fork that and preferably not fork, but preferably find a way to integrate it without forking it. There's so many options. Hydrogen is also a possibility, I guess. And the question is, does hydrogen support audio messages and images. It does not seem to. I think that hydrogen is out for that reason. What else do we want? Um, so E2EE would be nice to have and must be easy to integrate. License can't be mm, proprietary, but it can clearly be AGPL. This is an entirely nonprofit uh, Thing and we're perfectly fine with releasing all source codes, so it's not like AGPL is a problem. Uh, matrix client for desktop and mobile. NeoChat does not look like it supports much and it's ugly, so that's out. IO client built with SwiftUI, that's out. This is only Android. Okay, Siphon, does it say if it's for, it says it's alpha, which isn't very promising. And it's on the Google Play and Apple App Store. Um, It's not considered ready for everyday use. But of course, one man's alpha is another man's 1.0. And so these, and I, I personally feel like when a person marks their software as alpha, that means that they're very 
conscientious of the fact that their software might not be complete and perfect. They're a perfectionist and perfectionists write better software. So if somebody writes alpha, that actually increases the likelihood that it's actually completely stable than if they just write, uh, try it now. Because if you're a move fast and break things type of person, you're not even going to write if it's alpha or beta. You're just going to be like, try my shit. And uh, so I don't know if we should really go by what the people say. I've tried Fluffy Chat and when I tried it, uploading images didn't work and it was kind of slow. Generally, I've had the problem that it was kind of slow. So But when I talked to other people who used Fluffy Chat, I got the impression that um, that it had previously supported the images and that it was just a momentary failure. And this screenshot seems to suggest, though it could just be a mock-up, of course. In fact, it probably is a mock-up. But um, it seems to suggest that images were at some point supported. Okay, so... I'm not going to make that decision just yet, I think. I think I'm going to hold off on that decision for now. I still have another hour left in the live stream, and I will uh, try to find the previous Czech language roadmap and translate that. to English. It's in a Google Doc somewhere and I need to find find it in my chat. Okay, I found it. So the goal of vegan, the goal of vegan buddies is to connect uh, new vegans with experienced vegan mentors. Nothing new there. I haven't actually read this document yet. Uh, To, who are available to mentor <laughs> uh, to provide advice across a variety of situations. The ideal would be that every city or town would have at least one vegan mentor in its vicinity. So features
Okay, so the interface for mentors to chat with mentees is something that we don't have in the mock-up at all. This is only what the, men, the, the new vegans would see, but we don't have anything yet drawn for the... Um, for the uh, mentors. And three... So the third thing is an admin interface. And what I said was we're going to use lobsters for that interface. We're not even going to develop a new interface at all because lobsters always already has the ability to approve new members. It's already an invite only community. And I personally don't think that a registration form is necessary. If you want to register people, they can write you an email. It's going to require manual intervention anyway. So they can write an email or do any other kind of uh, system like that. It could be a Google form. There no doesn't need to be anything programmed. So of course, we don't have to stick to um, the thing that has been prepared for me in this Google Doc, which is three pages long, I see. But it might be interesting to translate it at least. Already I'm seeing a divergence between this uh, um, this plan and what Peter has prepared here in that they are talking about mentor map is the first thing that they talk about and they say that it should be a map of the Czech Republic and that you should click on the icons to see the mentors and that doesn't work for the entire world you can't show a map of the entire world well you can have it like zoom in on your current location but i think that the list of people near you is actually a lot better uh, near you and have it based off of the distance though we can have a mentor map i guess it's not a problem but it's not i think A, a priority. Mm. So the mentor details are supposed to be name, nickname, photo, uh, city, map, Okay, so what are they willing, what kind of contact methods are they willing to engage in? They say chat, email, telephone, or personal um, uh, meeting.
maybe also all of those make sense because email is kind of a more long form communication if you want to have like a, a person that you're going to use as a pen pal and availability status this is all stuff that i would put into that json object that i talked about i'll have i'll create a widget for um editing this and that's going to be the only change i would make to the lobsters database is i would create a web-based widget for editing that json object so you weren't editing the json object by hand but you were using some kind of fancy form to do that and okay rating they want the mentors to be rated and that's something that i don't know how to do because this right here is something that's editable by the mentor and the mentor rating is something that uh shouldn't be editable by the mentor obviously and I guess generally we need a way of reporting people and uh, because obviously there can be sexual harassment and other sorts of problems. And so we need to have some kind of system for dealing with that. And that can't be in this field because this field is editable by the mentor. Um, so I'll have to keep that in mind. And then we have the chat widget and we can Okay, so the the person who writes this wants to have I'm not sure how we'll do that, a multi party chat, but of course Matrix supports that, so... Emoji... Uh, that's not a problem in Matrix. Um, that's a little bit of a trouble, but it's not like impossible to support photos, videos, and voice messages. We just have to find the right uh, technology. Push notifications are, I don't know, but it work, matrix works. It works as a chat, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Okay, so they write like Facebook Messenger, but I, I, I'm going to go and delete that. That's not necessary to write. Um, I don't know what this, my profile, I guess this would be um, mentee, mentee profile. And this is going to be similar to mentor profile. Mentor profile and mentee profile. I'm going to put them next to each other, but they're actually going to be recorded differently because the mentees aren't going to be in the lobsters database. And so the question is where the mentee profile will be stored. Um, but I think that matrix actually supports having uh, okay, they only write name, nick, name, password, and email, and there needs to be So that's all stuff that's supported by the matrix 
thing. When you create an account on a matrix server, those things are stored. There's even there's even the image that you have. So those aren't a problem to add. I wanted to add one thing. Right, matrix Nick is going to be in the mentor profile because that's how that chat is actually going to be started. Um, so I'm gonna go and up this one level. Okay. Okay, so account deletion is going to be interesting because um, when the person will delete their account as a mentor, then they need to delete the account on Lobsters as well as deleting the account on the Matrix server. And I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do that, but both services currently support account deletion. It's just a manage matter of connecting them. Um, uh huh, and and they want it so that they they can upgrade mentees to um, mentors. I don't think that's really necessary. I think that's, I, I'm not even sure if that's nice to have, like maybe they can reuse the same matrix account, uh, but other than that, it's not really necessary, I think. Okay, so. The next section, why is this putting stars here? Um, the next section is for mentors. pushing this down, I need to put that up again. This Google document isn't exactly the best form, like formatted in the best or organized in the best way. So I'm gonna then go back and edit the roadmap a little bit um, to improve that, I guess. For now, it's good enough. And so we're an hour in. We have a half an hour more to go. Communication chat. Okay, so I'm I got confused here. Um, so the chat 
messenger C the mentees I'm currently talking to um So I guess that uh, like reporting bad users, like sexual harassment and stuff can be done by private messaging the admins and maybe there can just be like in both the mentor and mentee user interfaces, I can just have a chat open all the time that would be directed towards the, the current language regions administration and then they would deal with those problems manually because those problems need manual invention, intervention anyways. Uh, so... I don't know why this is duplicated, but... I would just put a link into the lobsters profile and make sure that they have like the same password on lobsters and on matrix so that it would be easy for them to uh, log in or they can do that themselves, I guess that they'll have two different accounts. They'll have the account on Lobsters and they'll have the account on Matrix. Uh, so maybe it could actually be the same, you know, because they would be able to see mentors near them. And the only difference would be that when you get in here, this, this messages, it's Bravi means messages in Czech, that messages list would show all of the mentees that had written them. So yeah, perhaps it could be the same exact interface for mentors and mentees. I didn't realize that, but I guess it's true. Um, And now they want me to write about the administration and I'm going to mix things up by So there's going to be a public part and a non-public part according to this So blocking users is obviously important. Deleting. Mm. So I guess like the question is how to, if I'm going to go with the lobsters plus matrix uh, architecture, then uh, how would you unify that all in one nice interface?
Wait, that's actually the wrong direction of... Well, I guess it's sending requests to the Lobster server, but the data flow is in that direction. And... Uh, it's going to make this bubble really big so it's easy to connect the mobile app part. with the mentor index. Actually, I think that it might actually be best if the mentor index had the latitude and longitude and the ratings and uh, that the latitude and longitude and the ratings weren't even stored in the lobster's JSON object. Uh, I think that makes sense. So men latitude and longitude of mentors. Maybe there should actually be latitude and longitude of maybe this should be the user inner index and it should have latitude and longitude of uh yeah that makes sense you should be able to rate mentees as well what if there's a total creep that's just creeping on people uh, who's like pretending to want advice but is actually just there to like be a jerk you want to have it so that they get ratings and so that mentors can see Mentees ratings as well. Uh, so the user index, um, So the Lobster server really just provides a, a way to store who has been invited as a mentor. And maybe so so who's been invited to be a mentor and also who like I would store information about their answers to test questions. Like if they've passed the test, that's something that you, you can cheat on anyway. So there's no point in storing, storing it anywhere else. I don't know, like the user index, maybe it's, hmm, it's a question. Maybe the only thing that you should look up in the lobster server is whether the person has been invited properly and approved and so the user index would just look up if the user is, is like there and valid. So maybe the lobster server only does invites and it doesn't store a huge JSON dictionary. I guess that's actually easier because I don't have to m modify the lobster's code base at all. I can only use it for what it's already been designed to do. Uh, I'm being a perfectionist now. So user index
And maybe we could have it so that the, the tests, the interactive tests would be both for mentors and mentees. And the mentees, and there could be like an interactive education program for vegans that they would then pass the test and then they would get a little star. Uh, that would make sense that you wouldn't really need to, the only distinction between a mentor and a mentee would be if they're marked as a mentor in the lobsters, lobster server. <clears throat> so lobster's address, um, So basically, when the person signs into the mobile app, uh, then it'll look the look up the users, the nearby users in the user index, filtering by those that have a lobster address, and then it'll go to lobsters and check that the person is actually currently approved to be a mentor. And. What else was there that the mentor fields should be? There was the nickname, the photo, the location. So photo is something that I would leave in matrix. Leave to matrix. Uh, I think that matrix supports, let me go check. I think that matrix supports a description of a user. Need to go check really quick. I don't know how I open up my own profile in matrix in element. No, it doesn't support. It doesn't seem to support showing a user description. It's interesting. Let me look on my mobile phone. If it's really the case, Okay, it seems to me like there's no, nothing in the, and what about fluffy chat? Maybe it's a problem with element that I can't set the, the description of the user. No, it seems the matrix doesn't support that. So description about me um, will be in the user index. And one question is like, how are we going to deal with searching of the user index so that we're not revealing um, 
personal information, uh, but I guess mentors just agree to have their personal information be public and mentees will not be globally searchable by just about any by just anyone in the user index. They'll have to be I guess they'll they'll just be limited to admins or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to go back and return to uh, the check. So we have password reset and that was everything that was left in there. Uh, that's that's actually everything. So I've I've copied everything over from the the previous roadmap and that was just a, basically a design. And now going back to OBS, um, how much time do I have left? I have 20 minutes left. And so I'm going to go back to trying to decide which of the three options that I came up with for the um, I guess I'll commit this to Git for now, and then I'll go back to deciding which of the three options I came up with for Hydrogen Web does not have a website. It's bizarre. Uh huh. Is deployed to hydrogen.element.io, but I have to sign in to. I'm confused. Is it broken entirely? This does not look like anything. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna give up on hydrogen. Uh, so I was committing this. And so the other options were Ditto, Fluffy, and Siphon. And I think that it comes down to basically the question of which code base is easiest to integrate. So I already looked at Ditto's code base and I was having trouble understanding it because I don't understand React. Uh, React and me just, they're, it's kind of foreign to me. Um, Android, iOS, so there's two different Gradle, Gradle, I, I, I really don't. Like understand this mobile stuff. I've never done mobile development, so I'm going to have to learn it as I go along. And so I don't know where the source code is in. If the source code is in this Android directory, I don't see any real like Gradle's a build script, you know, or is that actually the source code? I don't know. Um, SRC. I don't even know if this siphon thing, since they say it's alpha, maybe this is empty because it's literally empty. Um, bunch of try catch stuff that I don't know so I don't know what f I know that fluffy at least exists and I've used it so maybe I'll have better luck here if I can find the source code for it source code that looks promising Android, iOS. Again, Android and iOS. So, how to build? Maybe I can try to build it and I can just play around with it. As I said before, I've never done any mobile development. It has the same like layout and it has some Kotlin files that don't have anything in them. Another empty Kotlin file. Okay. I'm just going to have to get used to this whole world of um, mobile development since I obviously don't know anything about it. Maybe lib. It seems to me like what's going on is that they have this lib directory where the actual source code is and then they somehow reuse that in the Android and um, iOS clients and I wonder I would hope that maybe I could figure out a way to use this library as a library and not actually um,
not actually modify fluffy chat at all that would be ideal right because then i wouldn't be forking it and i could take advantage of their further development and it would just be generally much much easier so i'm gonna try cloning this uh vegan buddies uh should I just commit? Of course I should just commit to it. It's the only one that I know is really used by people. I know that it has problems, but we can solve those problems. We can commit to a specific version. Um, why isn't that... I don't remember how to add, maybe get someone to add. So, yeah, we don't have permission to use that link. So, and I see that this copy button does not work. It's 70 megabytes. No, it's going to be over. It's going to be over second 70 megabytes. It's going to be over 100 megabytes for this repository. Oh, well. And it's slow because I'm streaming to absolutely nobody as far as I know. I don't see, like, any messages in the chat. Still only at 65%. How large is this repo? I'm paying for this bandwidth because I'm on my mobile network because I needed a stable network for streaming. Uh, this is going to be expensive. This is going to be an expensive stream that nobody watched. <laughs> While we're waiting for that, I wanted to tell you all that vegan, that Queen V who's a vegan musician, is running a crowdfunding campaign for her first vegan album of vegan music. And so if you want to go and support a vegan artist, then go ahead and chip in for her crowdfunding campaign. I think it's pretty cool. And what I noticed when I was looking at the crowdfunding campaign and what I eventually did was that she has for 250 pounds the ability to um, ask her to write a song. And so I'm hoping that I'll be able to tell her what, the, what to write a song about because I love commissioning songs. That's so much fun. So how much was it in the end? It was 300 megabytes. Oh, yo. Whatever. Um, so... We have this fluffy chat, and now I need to figure out how to build it. They, they have build instructions, how to build. Uh, and I need to recurse submodules as well. Or 
did that already happen? Maybe that already happened? Maybe that already happened. And... I don't have Flutter installed. Install Flutter. Flutter is an open source framework by Google for building beautiful natively compiled multi-platform applications from a single code base. Okay, I'm not really sure if I love Google, but it sounds nice. So how do I install it? Uh, maybe I should just go, since I'm on, I'm trying out for the first time NixOS, I'm going to find out. if there's a package for Flutter in Nix. And yeah, I can just install that. Config Nix configuration, and I'll add it to my configuration. And Hopefully it won't take up gigabytes and gigabytes, but since it's Google, it will probably take up gigabytes and gigabytes. I'm, I'm in, uh, specifically using the virtual machine with a password that's not important so that when I type in the password, you can't use audio analysis to figure out my password. It's not my real password. So we're already an hour and a half in and we haven't started development yet at all, but this is only the first stream, so uh, hopefully in the future, I will actually get to coding. But I'm going to wait until this Flutter thing installs, and I'm going to see what happens when I do Flutter run. Uh. Wait, what's this three? Choose your target platform below and enable support for it. Uh, PU, vegan buddies. Uh, I don't know how to enable the support for the thing. They just seem to like think that it's obvious that you've, you're a Flutter expert. But I'm not a Flutter expert and analysis options. No, that's probably just some kind of uh, like linting or something. I don't know. I don't know what they mean by that. Maybe I should start learning about Flutter by pressing learn. I 
I'm a beginner and I want to start my journey. So it's written in Dart, I guess, this fluffy chat. And I don't know Dart. I've never used Dart. I presume it's like, I don't know anything about Dart, so <laughs> I'll find out. I guess it's an imperative language, probably. So it's still installing. Hopefully it's not eating up all my bandwidth. I don't know, I, I'm not sure like where to start. Still not done installing. Oh, Hill. So it uses some kind of structured uh, thing to show, it's like JSX or something like that, but different to, to create the widgets.
still building. Ach ja. Will it ever end? Okay, so Flutter's using this model control thing where they have this, or a view control thing where they have a view, the stateful widget, and the state class. And I never understood what the control part of model view control was, to be honest, but. What the fuck? They, they, they have such so much boilerplate code that they have programmed a way to automatically generate that boilerplate. Okay, but I guess that's only on the Android Studio thing. It's probably not in VS Code. Enter random words as the name of your widget. The random words widget does little else beside creating its state class. Once you've entered random words as the name of the stateful widget, the IDE automatically updates the accompanying state class, naming it random words state by default with an underscore. <laughs> the name of the state class is prefixed with an underbar. Prefixing an identifier with an underscore enforces privacy in the Dart language and is a recommended best practice for state objects. The IDE also automatically updates the state class to extend state random words, indicating that you're using a generic state class specialized for use with random words. Most of the app's logic resides here. It maintains the state for the random words widget. This class saves the list of generated word pairs, which grows indef infinitely as the user scrolls. And in part two of this lab, favorite word pairs as the user adds or removes them from the list by toggling the heart icon. Right. 
random words. I don't know Dart. I don't know what this means. Is it initializing a or a type declaration for a dictionary? But what is the type key then? Is it a string? Why would key be somehow special? And this still isn't done building. Horrible. It's been, what, 10 minutes now, I think? Building and installing Flutter. I wonder how it is on non-Nix operating systems. I hope it's faster than that. They have this extend state random words, but I don't know where the random words was. Ooh. Or maybe this is, is a type. It's not like a class. And this state is a container. And this random words is what it holds. But what is random words? I guess random words is this type. This const thing is actually a type declaration. It's so bizarre. And why is, or maybe this is the type declaration and the state contains the widget? I'm confused, really confused by this code. And this still isn't finished. So I guess I'm going to finish up the stream now because I'm 15 minutes over. And I'll just uh, test things out next week. Uh, I'll be streaming at 6 p.m. on Tuesday again. So adios.